Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sherry, my channel is Blue Gemini. <laughs> you remember. <laughs> so hey everybody. Hi everybody. <laughs> you guys, that's Eris, of course. So you guys, guess what? I had my baby. <laughs> I had her on Thursday, the 28th. Yeah, which is kind of ironic because I think, I think, um, my last video, I think I made it like a couple days before, like a day before or something like that. But yeah, so I had her, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting because it was so weird, like, I'm getting McKenna as everybody knows like and that's supposed to stop your labor and stuff and y'all I had her almost a month early I want to yeah almost a month early because she was due on Thanksgiving which is November 25th and I had her October 28th so yeah almost a month early but yeah it was um yeah it was a long experience God, this road. it was a long experience so Yeah, it was a long experience. <laughs> like, I don't even know where to start. But so, I was, like, feeling pain the day that I um, went into labor. I've been feeling a lot of pressure lately already, which I remembered with Eris. Like, that's what, that's, I went into labor when I felt a lot of pressure. I walked around Walmart, and then I just felt so much pressure. So, I was with my mom that day, and I was walking around Walmart. It's like Walmart triggers pregnancy, like, my labor. And then I went home, and I just. I didn't even feel, I don't think I felt that much pressure that day, but I have been feeling pressure days before. Like to the point to where like, I would get up and I literally felt like I needed to hold my stomach because it was just like gravity. And so I had started having like contractions at night, but like, I don't really know how strong they were or anything like that. I just noticed them that night. Like they were super, um, like it was like period cramps. Like, and it was like, not coming and going and it was out of nowhere at like eight nine o'clock and i hadn't had contractions like that or anything the entire pregnancy and then i had started Ow. noticing what? i had started noticing that um that the baby wasn't she just wasn't kicking as much like she wasn't she just wasn't kicking as much like it was like a few days before and i think i really noticed it after we had found out we had um the rona because I was like, dang, I wonder, did it, like, get to her to where it's, like, she's weak? Because she just wasn't kicking as much. Like, she would kick one day to where, like, my stomach looks like ocean waves. And then the next day, I'd have to, like, shake my stomach for her to kick. And so, this day, I had just noticed, like, she wasn't kicking really much. But then I was also up with my mom and like moving around and stuff. So I don't really be feeling her when I'm up moving around. It's always when I'm still, then she'll start kicking a lot. And I was laying there and I didn't really, like I was, I just wasn't feeling her move or whatever. So I didn't really think nothing of it because I would still feel like, I felt like maybe, okay, from laying there for maybe like two, three hours, I would feel like a really light kick. Like from me, she moving my stomach, I felt a really light movement or I would just feel her body, like, I would feel her back. Like, I'd feel her shift in position, so just not kicking. So I was like, okay, once the little contractions came, then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to probably just see how it goes because, you know, my water broke with air, so I was just like, let me just see if they get strong or whatever. And then it was like a sign. I was watching YouTube. And I was watching, there's this one YouTuber with her family, it's, um, oh, I want to say it's Beauty is her name, that's, I think that's her name, but she's, like, a YouTuber with, like, five kids, and she's pregnant with her six. What? No, I gotta go to another school. Crazy? This way? Yeah, I Okay. But, um, so she's pregnant with her sixth kid, and... I've watched her before and I used to watch her but I've like really been watching her since she's been pregnant because we were due a day apart she was due I think the day after I am or the day before so I just been watching her like in the beginning when I was just like okay how how, how I wonder like how big 
how big does your stomach get at this point or just comparing and stuff and like just I mean she was eating good food on there too so I was laying there that night and she had posted a video about having to have an emergency c-section and I was watching it or whatever and she was basically saying like her baby wasn't moving she noticed it wasn't moving and stuff and she was just like go with your instinct and the doctor said like basically if they would have waited then the baby may not have made it and stuff and like the baby came out healthy and everything but it just made me like i went to sleep after that and i was just like really noticing my, my pretty seatbelt. your seatbelt is on girl but i just went to sleep and it was just like it was just like kind of bothering me because i was just like you know like is that is that a sign is that telling me something so then when my boyfriend got off of work at like two i was still feeling the contractions like all all night like from nine to like two consistently i took a shower and everything and i was still feeling them and then i ended up falling asleep at like midnight you done it's nobody's birthday <laughs> but i um so I wanted to see if they would get stronger or not. They were kind of just staying the same. Elvis, girl. They were kind of just staying the same. So, y'all, she's like been stuck on singing happy birthday since her birthday. She sings it like all day, every day. No, this is my birthday cake. Okay, your birthday cake. But, um. Mommy. Huh. This is my party. Okay. But so. I had fell asleep at like 12 and then I woke up at like 2 when he got off of work and I was just sitting there and I was just I still felt the contractions but they weren't like dire to where like I would have normally went and got checked I would have just assumed my body's getting ready and it's like really strong practice so I'm sitting there and I'm shaking my stomach and I'm just trying to you know do different things to get movement and I'm not feeling nothing still so I did this like flashlight thing that I seen where you put a flashlight to your stomach and then the baby's supposed to kick because they see the light. Nothing. And then I was doing it for like maybe 30 minutes or an hour or so, like just to try and feel like any kind of kicks or you know, what airs? What? Okay, you can eat. You're not eating candy. When not I get out of school, okay? But, um, and you guys might, like, with my daughter, she, she, um, she, she was a lazy baby. <laughs> like, early mornings, when I would go to my specialist appointment, they'd have to buzz me with this vibrator thing on my stomach to wake her up because every morning she'd, like, be in a deep sleep. And the test that they would run on me, she had to be woke. So, it was kind of like, okay, is she just a, is she just a heavy sleeper or what? And so... I was just sitting there and like for an hour she just it just she wasn't moving so I told my boyfriend I was just like I think I'm gonna go in so I had him stay home because it was like no point in you know him no point in us getting the girls out at two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning or waking somebody up just to go to the hospital and then like say it's a false alarm or something like that so I told him just stay here and then he had just got off of work too so I was just like just stay here if they say anything it's not like I'd go into labor you know in an hour so I ended up going to the hospital at like three o'clock in the morning. He was there with the girls. So they were monitoring me and they were like confused because they were just like, they were they had the um, heart rate thingy on. They had the heart rate thingy on to like just keep track of the baby's heart rate. There's like a gnat flying up around me. And um, so they had me hooked up to that for some hours. They did an ultrasound she was moving she was kicking and everything her heart rate was normal but they wanted to see it fluctuate and like go higher and lower it's the same thing my um specialist appointments do um but they don't buzz you or nothing they just wanted to see it naturally go high and low so i'm sitting there for hours they do an ultrasound and like that was the main relief like because she was kicking on the ultrasound but it was weird because i couldn't feel none of the kicks like the guy would be like did you feel that and i'm like no i don't i don't feel nothing and he was saying that it was it, it could have just been that like it was a lot of fluid because I wasn't feeling anything Mommy. like I normally do. What is? I just want to go park. Okay. It's too cold to go to park. Huh? It's too cold when it gets hot, okay? I just want to go to park. Okay, we'll see, okay? Huh? I said, we'll see. 
So they did the ultrasound and everything. Mommy. Yes, Eris. It's a red, red card. I don't know. We gotta find it, okay? Okay. Uh, 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 People just drive so stupid. Oh man, gonna look at me like I'm crazy for honking. Mommy. You getting all up in my lane. But so, um, yes, Eris. Yeah, yeah. It was so hard to tell a story with a child. <laughs> okay, so, so they did the ultrasound and everything, and so they were still like concerned as to why her heart rate wasn't going up more. Like it wasn't, it was just staying at the regular, like 140 or something like that, which is not bad. Like the heart rate, it's, it wasn't about her heart rate being bad. It's just they want to see it. I, I don't really understand why they want to see it go high and then go low, but. I don't know. All the doctors seem to say that they want to see that. They want to see the baby active. What their heart rate is when they're active, I guess. So, they were going to keep me there. It was like, probably like 10 o'clock in the morning or so by then. And they were going to keep me there until 5 and do like a um, temporary stay or something like that, they called it. Where at 5 o'clock, they were going to do another ultrasound. And then they were monitoring my contractions and stuff. But then, come to find out where they were monitoring my contractions because at one point I was just like are you guys seeing the contractions like am I having contractions because I was feeling them and they were just like oh no you've only had one this whole time and it was like hours into the visit but I had felt them you know my legs were hurting like y'all it felt like a bad period and so come to find out the monitor that was on my contractions was not catching the contractions it was only catching the heart rate and wherever she had put it like I guess my uterus was lower than what she thought or where she thought or whatever but wherever she placed it, it it wasn't catching the contractions because as soon as they moved it then she was getting all the contractions back to back so then they ended up checking me because of all the contractions and I was telling her like my legs hurt <laughs> like my legs hurt my back hurt my stomach hurts Mommy. yes baby it's not hot. okay it's not hot yeah. okay but um so they ended up checking me. I was two centimeters and she was just like, I was two to three and she was just like, people can stay that up until, you know, they give birth or whatever, which I've heard that. And then the fact that I've had um, other kids, I've heard that like you can dilate and then just stay there. So then we're sitting there and sitting there for hours, just waiting for five o'clock to hit for them to um, keep monitoring and stuff. So then two hours later, she texts me again because of all the contractions. I'm like, three almost i'm like four centimeters i think almost like i was almost five or i was three i was just over four or something like that no this was four hours later so then they're just like okay we can't send you home now because now i'm like almost five centimeters and it was just like everybody was just kind of like laughing about it because they were just like you just came in here for something simple like <laughs> And it wasn't like my contractions were super, super strong for me to say, like, I'm in labor. Like, even in the beginning, I was just like, is this considered labor? And then she was just like, no, they want to try and keep her in me. Like, you know, they don't want to deliver if they don't have to because they gave me a steroid shot. And then I was going to get another steroid shot the next day. That would have basically, um, I think it was, no, that was for um, like lung development. Never mind. I scratched that. So, yeah, so I ended up pretty much getting admitted at like 3 o'clock, got my epidural, and went through some hours. It was, it, was, it was painless up until the end. Like, I'm usually good with the pain of pregnancy, like contractions and stuff, because I get the epidural. Like, I'm, <laughs> why, why force myself to deal with pain when I don't have to? Like, during the epidural, I was just like, I tell myself every time, like... What? Yeah. I know. I see. Not much fun. But during the epidurals, yeah. I tell myself every time, like, why do I keep doing this? Like, why? Do, why do I keep having babies? Because the epidural process, I hate that process. It's so uncomfortable and like it's such a weird feeling. But then it's worth it after, like, when I don't feel anything. Like this epidural was a good one too. Like my legs instantly went numb. I didn't. Feel, I didn't even feel my stomach. Like I touched my stomach and I felt nothing. So then. Airplane. Airplane. Yeah. So then they ended up eventually giving me Pitocin. Um, and then they eventually broke my water. So once they broke my water, 
it was maybe within a matter okay. airplane yeah it was maybe within a matter of like 10 15 no, maybe Bobby. 20 minutes okay. that um okay. that i was like in pain like going through contraction mm -hmm. pain like to where it was like i don't even know if it was contractions it was like she was coming <laughs> and so i ended up doing like five six pushes and bam she was out but the twist to it all y'all which sucks like hell and is the part that is like killing me with this whole situation is she's in Niki right now because she, her like she was born she was good and everything like she was a good weight and everything she was little like probably the littlest out of all my kids but okay but it wasn't nothing to like but she wasn't um considered like um Okay, that's not our school. That's not part. She wasn't um considered like like Niku small, like to where she needs to go to Niku because of her size or nothing like that. She went to Niku because her oxygen. Um, they said that it takes babies a minute to kind of get used to some babies to get used to air versus being in water, and then if they're if they're early, she's considered a late preterm. So she was um having trouble regulating her oxygen out. Not in, like, she wasn't having breathing issues, but it was just, I guess, getting the oxygen out. So, her numbers were were um, fluctuating. And the nurse was kind of concerned because when we fed her, when I fed her, like, we only got her for maybe, like, a couple hours. Maybe two hours, if that. And it was skin to skin. Like, they were making me do skin to skin in order to regulate her oxygen levels. Like, my boyfriend didn't get to do skin to skin. He barely even held her. He only got to hold her for like the little bit of time of um, like when they would be moving me and they would like have me hand her over to him to hold. And so, um, and so, um, and so, um, by the time we went to our actual room room, that's when um, the nurse was noticing the numbers, which they already were noticing the numbers. Like Niku had kept coming down and they were just like, um, she was doing this like it to me it was just a baby noise but to them it was a sign that her oxygen she couldn't get it out so they didn't really like panic or nothing about it they didn't really panic or nothing about it they just kind of said they just said do skin to skin and then that usually will regulate it or whatever so it wasn't until we got into the room the nurse just didn't feel comfortable with leaving her in there because she was just like i can't sit here the entire time and um and you know watch it or whatever <laughs> so she um when i was feeding her with the nurse in there her oxygen levels i don't know what it is but it's not her breathing it's just it's something else that because she didn't she wasn't having any trouble breathing but her levels dropped i guess they wanted to be at 95 as i was feeding her it was dropping to like as low as 60 so she ended up getting sent to nursery. They sent her to nursery, and then they sent her to NICU. And the, uh, uh, don't touch that, girl. And the screwed up part about it all, you guys, I have not been able to see her since because of the fact that they do a COVID test when you go into labor. And even though my COVID test from, what, last Friday, two tests were negative, it came up positive on their test for some reason. And so, their whole regulations, like, changed, like, everything. Like, they made us be in isolation. It wasn't even, like, isolation. It was just, like, it was just, like, me and my boyfriend were not allowed to leave the room. He wasn't allowed to go out and get food. Some of them let him go out. Some of the nurses let him go out and get food, but for the most part, he wasn't supposed to go out and get food. He was, he, he, nobody, we couldn't go to the nursery to see her. We couldn't go to NICU to see her. Nothing. Like, nothing. So, all I could do from the day she was born, the 28th is when she went. We had her at 9.30 at night. So, they took her maybe like 11 o'clock or so. And that was it. We haven't seen her since. And the only thing that they've done or been able to do, like the nurses and stuff are really nice at the hospital. Like, they all thought it was really stupid because of the fact that I have zero symptoms, I have a negative test. Like, 
Like the fact that me and my boyfriend had negative tests after we had COVID. And it was I was just like, Can you guys retest me? Like this like it doesn't make sense. It's kinda of like get do a second test. If I have a negative test from a few days before, do a second test. Like it's simple. Like and they just was like they can't I don't even remember why, but all the nurses were really nice and like sympathetic about it because it was just like I could have easily like went up there and just visited her and sat with her and stuff like but we haven't been able to see her we haven't even really got to have that moment where like you really just sit there and just look at your baby and just you know like I'm doing we're doing it through pictures which sucks so um they ended up I ended up getting pic a picture of her and then like Niku said that they would take my phone and they took pictures of her for me and stuff which I, I mean which was all good and I mean I get why we can't visit her because she's in NICU and yeah. I mean regardless of what we say as far as like oh a positive test they have to go by what they have in record on their record so yeah. I mean it's, it's babies up there that are sick that cannot afford to even be at risk for COVID so I understand that but it's just so stupid to me it's just so stupid to me yeah. all the nurses think it's so stupid because of you know Bye. it's like it's just so stupid yes. and so today is Sarah. the first she's been in there since the 28th uh -oh. um, uh -oh. the uh, her oxygen uh -oh. levels have Can been you? fine she's been stable and everything like they've been stabilized See? it she was eating and everything like she was overeating Come and everything on. And every day, it was like, every day we have to call and find out how she's doing to see if they're going to release her discharger. And then the stupid part, y'all, I can't even get her when she's discharged. Like, that's, her daddy can't get her when she's discharged because they said he's been around me. So I can't get her. He can't get her. My sister has to get her. My sister has to go up to Ninku and listen to all the little parenting stuff. Bring her down with the car. Like, my sister has to play mom, which sucks. I'm gonna do it because I'm just like just at this point just give me my child <laughs> and we basically like every day we don't know if they're gonna discharge her or not because now as of yesterday she has jaundice which I mean I that's normal too I know and because she was um early I know that's a risk because both of my kids had it and they said that if you're if the siblings had it most likely you know they're gonna have it and Renaya had it to where they sent her home and then I had to rush her back to the hospital at a, when she was a week old because she had it and it was too bad. And she had like a seizure thing or something. So, I mean, I don't want that to happen. So, I'm glad that they caught it before they sent her home. But it's just like, uh, the fact that we can't even see her. Like, at first, I was just like, I mean, I'm glad that they're at least, you know, they're making sure she's good, which I'm glad. But then it didn't hit me, like, how hard it would be to, like, just know that we cannot see her it went from thinking okay she'll be discharged the day after i'm discharged to now being days and days and days and it's like every day it's like are they gonna discharge her or are they gonna not and they said that they want her to eat she's not eating as much because jaundice makes you tired so she's overeating on some feeding but then she's under eating on some and the doctor wants her to be consistent on each feeding so it's like is that going to be the next thing that like keeps her there? Is you guys saying that she needs to? What time is it? Oh, you guys saying that she needs to um eat? Which my sister said that that's what happened with her. Is that her daughter stayed up an extra week? Get it from here because of um her eating. So that's where we're at now. It's just pretty much like. I mean, on the upside, on, po on a positive note, you know, she's not in there because of any life or death situation. I mean, they said that the doctor, like, does their rounds or whatever, and they deal with the sickest first, because every time I call to get an update, the doctor hasn't seen her yet. And they said that, no, they said that they do their rounds. No, oh, you do that after. Okay, leave this alone. You want that? Yeah. Shut it. But they said that they do their rounds and um they deal with baby this is no this is no good <laughs> look at it but they do their rounds and that they deal with the sickest first and she's considered the least sickest in the NICU so I mean I'm glad for that at least it could be worse it could be something you know that's 
to where it's like she's she's gonna be there for months or, or like a month or whatever. Yeah, hard. I know it looks gross, but it's just a matter of just being patient. We're just being patient. We're getting the house ready. We just finished today, like getting everything ready, which is a relief at least because even though we had everything, like we bought everything that we needed, it wasn't all set up and stuff. And like I wanted to rearrange my room and the living room. I wanted to rearrange everything to kind of make it work for me with her. So we just finished that today. So on the upside, I mean, it gave us time to get everything like fully situated. Mm. But it's just like, give me my child. Like, <laughs> like it sucks. It sucks because we just cannot even see her. It's not even like I can go visit. If I can go visit her, then it's like, okay, it, it helps. Okay, it helps. But it's like, we can't even go visit her. It's like, she just... She's probably just like, where is my, where are my parents? And she probably not, she probably doesn't even realize it, but still, still, it's just like, they need to really like figure out some kind of other method when uh -huh. like there's COVID involved, like, because it's kind of stupid because it's like, they said, okay, okay, okay. They said like, okay, we can't see her because she's in NICU. Get that. Okay. But she's already been around us. So if hypothetically, if I was sitting here sick, dying of COVID and just like, oh my God, sick, obvious symptoms, everything. You guys would have still gave her to me right after she was born because I had her still. Positive test and all. She was in my room. So if I would have gave it to her, she's still going to NICU. Okay. Like you would think that they would have just isolated her from NICU. Okay. Or even once she was stabilized or whatever with the oxygen move her to a different area or something or make it to where you know you okay okay no more sanitizer no more but or like take her to another room and we isolate see her I mean, she's already been around us it's so stupid okay no more because this stuff is strong it's just so stupid it's so stupid but i'm i am i am glad that she's good and i am excited for her to come home like eris and nana are excited they've been gone eris just came home today I'm getting Renaya from school right now. They've been at my sister's house. So they're both excited to see her, which um, which is a good thing, of course. <laughs> but Nana wanted to... I know it's strong. Nana wanted to um, help me set up her like clothes and all that stuff. So now she'll be able to. And we'll just go day by day and just each day just uh, hope that they release her. Because now they said that her levels are of jaundice are getting higher but it peaks at three and four days of life so that's for your keys that's for your keys you can have it but it peaks at yes okay but it peaks at three to four days so mm -hmm. so um right now it's at its peak so they want to see if it drops on its own come tomorrow so hopefully it does she's not under the blue light or nothing so it's not it's not that bad but that's what makes it even worse it's like it's like it, she's not that bad but she's bad enough for them to want to keep her but then she's not bad enough for like treatment to try and hurry up and get it to go down which i'm not complaining but it's just a, it's just a very frustrating situation it's frustrating having to call for updates on my child. It's frustrating not being able to see her. They told me today that they can probably video call me. But then I'm just like, I don't know if I can handle just sitting there watching her on video. Being taken care of. Because if she cries or something, it's like there's nothing I can do. But just sit there. But just sit there. So, I don't know. I'm hoping tomorrow. Don't turn that off. You're going to make us burn up in here. I'm hoping tomorrow that there's some kind of a positive update or, you know, even if they say her levels are going down, but they can't discharge her yet. At least that tells me, okay, then the next day, at least her levels should be good. Or, you know, she'll most likely come home the next day. As long as I, I know something with an end, like some kind of an end date. But, but yeah, but yeah, she's so cute though. She reminds me of Nana and Eris. Like she, she don't got Eris's head because Eris got her daddy head daddy chrome dome um Araya has nana's head and she has i don't really know she 
Or her name is Araya? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she looks like both of them combined, which is which is kind of interesting. But um yeah. I may put some pictures. I probably won't because I'm not um Yeah. Yeah, J R. But I may put some pictures. I don't know. I'm not um Yeah, Araya. Yeah, no, no. But I'm not um editing this video. <laughs> I literally just made it on my way to pick Renaya up from school. I know. We gotta go get it. I'm letting the line go down. But yeah, but yeah. So that's how my day has been going. That's how my week's been going. Um, I'll be glad when it's over and we're just home and we're just enjoying her. But until then, I'll just let them keep making sure she's healthy because I don't want to get her and then she got to go back for nothing so so yeah so on that note you guys I will talk to you guys later on the next video I'm not sure when that'll be 100% but um I may be I may be able to start getting some out a little okay. I may be I may be able to start getting them out a little a little more because um when I'm about to be out of school for three weeks, and I'm just gonna be home with this one and Araya, so we'll see. We'll see. But on that note, you guys, thanks for listening. Mommy, I do not Araya. I know you're not. I know you're not Araya. I know you're Iris. Yeah. I know. <laughs> But thanks you guys for watching. Comment down below. Just subscribe if you have not already. And hit your post notifications. So you can know my next video will be uploaded. Bye.